Long before self-help gurus were telling you how to implement rules to be successful, Catholic monks in monasteries were talking about rules to be awesome, not just successful in what you do, but in who you are. By awesome, I mean holy. Yeah, successful at your core. And I'm going to talk to a real live Benedictine monk who doesn't just live the rules of the Benedictine monastery, but has great insights for how you can implement simple, doable rules in your daily life to help you succeed at being saint, insert your name here. So while I want you to let that part of the interview just inspire you and help form you, there's another part of the interview that's not spoken about that I want to inform you and inspire you as well. After our camera stopped rolling, Father Weta talked to me about his health problems. Uh, that he's, he was just pumped full of meds to help him get through the interview, that he has brain damage, that he has early onset Parkinson's connected to that brain damage. And he said, you know, barring a miracle, I'll probably be bedridden within 10 years. So, by the way, pray for that miracle to happen because miracles do, in fact, happen. So, Father Weta, we'll pray for you for that. Uh, but, guys, he said, look, what am I supposed to sit around and be sad? Guys, let his jovialness speak to you because it's a sign that he has faith that no matter what trial he's in the midst of, there's an eternal victory. And that doesn't just enable us to hang on to hope. It enables us to kind of have fun with life and to take ourselves and our problems lightly, even when they're heavy. Enjoy the interview. Hey, thanks for being with me, man. I'm so excited to have you. <laughs> yeah. That's our secret handshake. <laughs> we developed that before we the We invented talk. it just, you saw it here first. When everyone else starts shaking hands that way, you can you say know you saw that it. it came from here. I met Father Augustine at a men's conference. And uh, the, as I was listening to your talk, the quote from Salvador Dali came to mind. He said, I don't do drugs. I am drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people, ever since college, people have been asking me if I were drunk. And I'm not. I swear. <laughs> I, I just am naturally foolish. And awesome. I, and awesome. No, Fool, yeah. I, dude, I, awesome. I was blown away by your talk. Thanks. I really, and I'm so, I was so excited to email you after. I'm like, are you going to be in Denver? Because I'd love to talk to you. And here I am. And here low. you are, like not, not a, a month later. It's incredible. Now, um, to show you another way that, that divine help and the, and the rules for life really work, uh, if you look, uh, if you do a close up at his face, he's actually 95 years old. So you see how great it makes you look and how smooth it makes your skin. Yeah. But <laughs> Forget oil of Olay. <laughs> no. Oil of. Walburga. <laughs> there, yeah, buddy. I got some of that stuff. Yeah, I, she, it's, it's she not produces easy to get. her own oil. Yeah, it's healing oil. Comes out of a rock or something, does yeah. it? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. We, we had some problem pregnancies that I got some of that stuff from my wife before. Did it work? Uh, it I, it did either that or I, mean, I don't know like I but I sure as heck used it and <laughs> I'll attribute that to Walburg, uh, uh So cool. Okay, before I, uh, I, I jump into like some rules for monastic living and stuff like that and how to apply it to my life as a schlep layman. What's a monk? Um, uh, as opposed to being a schlep layman. Yes. Uh, a monk is a schlep who prays. Mm. I, I remember actually talking to my abbot once. Well, I've talked to him more than once. But, and he's, and I complaining about what schleps the monks were. And he said, Augustine, the monastery is not a sanctuary for saints. It's a refuge for sinners. So um, I have already forgotten what your question was. <laughs> Speaking of. Yeah, yeah, no, what's a monk? What's a monk? Uh, so, yeah, like, monks are just men who pray. Priest? How are you different from a parish priest or a friar? Or like, what's, what is it that makes a monk a monk? We pray. We, we pray. We seek God. That's the only definition. Uh, as That's beautiful. When I talk to kids about vocations and the nature of the monastic life, I say, well, the, the Franciscans work with the poor. The, uh, the Dominicans preach. No one quite knows what the Jesuits do. <laughs> but the, just joking. Uh, let's see. Where was I? I can't. Yeah, this... This is going to be a disaster, I can <laughs> tell. <laughs> um, right? Oh, oh, but monks, we pray. That is our apostolate. Uh, we also work in order to support our prayer habit. But 
Ora et labora is the motto of the Benedictine. We work in prayer. Yeah, we get up at five in the morning, we pray, we go off and we work. Well, no, then we meditate, then we pray again, then we work, then we pray, then we work, then we pray, then we pray, then we eat in silence so we can pray. How many hours a day are you praying? Uh, if you, you know, when you're not on the road. I, I worked it out. It's about two and a half hours a day. Nice. Yeah, yeah, if you do it right. But there's, there's a, so there's a balance of work and prayer. And right, and back to... Co- no, it's cool. I got I got the thread. <laughs> and there's life and community, and you have an abbot you live in obedience to, and your work is, is, is we teaching... We actually do not take vows of chastity or poverty. You don't? We predate all that by about 800 years. Wow. I mean, between you and me, there's no telling how long these Dominicans are going to last. I know, you know, man. They've only been around since <laughs> the, the 1200s. 1200s. So, but the Benedictines have been around since the eight. 500s, and they didn't quite know what to do with us. So we take vows of um, obedience, conversion, and stability. Beautiful. But uh, so yeah, yeah, it is. Well, because what 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 the monk seeks to do is to cut out a little piece of creation and create a heaven on earth where you can pray. Um, and but but you can't just sort of create a place like that and then leave. So. We take vows to die where we join. Wow. And uh, so so we take a vow of stability. But the problem with that is that stability can turn into stagnancy pretty easy. And so uh, we take a vow to constantly convert. Wow. Because the cardinal sin for the monk, well, there are two cardinal sins. Actually, there are about 30, but uh, <laughs> two that Benedict complains about the most. The, 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 the Desert Fathers complained about acedia, which they called the noonday devil. Laziness. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, 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 not, it's very complicated because it can also express itself in workaholism, right? It's just this sort of odd discontent that usually takes place around lunchtime where you say, eh, yeah, I, I was telling, I was giving a retreat to a bunch of priests from Boston. Shout out to the priests of Boston, by Ooh, the way. Father. Like, father, my, my, my brother's a firefighter, father. Let's go get the car. <laughs> they were awesome. They were so cool. But I was telling them, I can always tell a sedia in confession because the confessor says, starts off with, well, I'm not a murderer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I always say, well, I would hope not. Yeah, so let's, yeah. But let's shoot for something a little better than that. But it's the busyness monk, with all the wrong stuff and shallow stuff. Yeah. yeah well, it, it's a sense that like I'm basically good enough. You know, mm-hmm. I think I'll take a nap. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, so acedia is is what the other? Well, I'll I'll ask you. What do you think the other sin is? Oh gosh, I have no idea. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, the sin of grudges against your brothers or Ooh. gossip in the monastery or stuff like that is that it am i yeah, hitting actually that? you're really close well done good job yeah yeah oh wait, wait secret, again, like, secret handshake no, no, oh yeah secret handshake <laughs> no no but we gotta do this again because it gets so oh. <laughs> and then the, the but the most recent one is the star wars fish bubble where it, you go <laughs> anyway. try that with your yeah. kids yeah where was I? Uh, <laughs> it was oh, yeah, the yeah. Sin in the monster. Grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. He says, ante omnia, above all other things, a monk must never grumble. And the longer I live in community, mm. the more I realize what a temptation that is. And how, like, I mean, running off with a woman, mm. not going to tear a community apart, but that cowardly, backstabbing, whiny, yeah. It's not always for me. No, I hear you. I don't know how you pronounce that I, or how you we're spell gonna, it. But it's going to have like a popular, like we're yeah. going to see the my, transcription. My, my personal favorite is pious grumbling, which says, poor brother so-and-so, you know, he's such a jerk. We should pray for him. <laughs> right. Like monks yeah. are so good. Or, or, or in the high school, I hear brave grumbling, which is the... Now, okay, I'm going to tell you something. And this isn't anything I wouldn't say to his face. Yeah, and you right? wouldn't. Yeah, yeah like, we, yeah. why are you not saying it to it's his like, face? Oh, oh, a kid told me a great joke the other day. How does every racist joke begin? How? Like this. 
Yeah, yeah. Someone right? looking behind their back. Yeah, because you, yeah. you, you say you'd say it to their face, but you would. Right, you Although, would. <laughs> in the junior high, and I get most of my material from the junior schoolers. But one of them, I heard one of them yelling in the hallway at his friend. He goes, "If you're gonna say something bad about me, at least make sure it didn't true." I was like, <laughs> well, I was like, I was like, "Hey, come here!" I'm like, what's it? He's like, "Well, he's mean? telling him true stuff." How do I deny that? Like, <laughs> I got to tell you, there's two things I've already drawn from this, applying to my life as a yeah. Player. Well, stability. Um, I mean, there. There's yeah. something cool about the ability to just get in a plane and go anywhere or move anywhere and have a lack of attachment to place. And, uh, and yet it can be profoundly spiritually distracting. Yeah. The endless possibilities can be so distracting yeah. from what God really wants, which is my ongoing conversion and my interior growth. That's humongo. Um, yeah. Not that God's saying don't dream, but like there's got to be a, a temperate, like make the dreams of a spiritual nature. Well, there has to be some sort of stability in everyone's life. Yeah. I mean, even if you're a, a missionary of charity, and I say I say mass for them every week, every month, and they 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 have all their possessions could be fit into a single plastic bag. Incredible. And at any moment they could be called off somewhere else. But they they have this interior stability that is that i envy i i love those nuns so much so beautiful not yeah. i during my most recent vocation crisis because i'm always having vocation crises <laughs> and you're sticking said, to it by the yeah. way he's not 95 he's but he's 53 and he's, he looks really young for 53 i gotta say this but go ahead so you're, you're you. sticking with it yeah well, a monk a well long time. There, there's a desert father story that says that um a monk was dissatisfied with his monastery and decided to leave. So he packed up all of his stuff and he said, I'll leave tomorrow. After seven years, God took the temptation away. <laughs> <laughs> that's and that's beautiful. basically the story of my life. Like yeah. I remember the first time I decided I was leaving. Well, okay. I decided I'm leaving, but I'm not. I took vows. I right, took that right, really right. seriously. So I, I've never really seriously not since vows but during my novitiate i went into abbot patrick's office and i found him asleep and i said to him wake up father patrick and he said yes yes and i said i'm leaving he goes today <laughs> i was like no he goes all right be a good monk today and leave tomorrow yeah and that's well i've been being a bad monk and leaving tomorrow ever since so. yeah wow People I've met who I think are probably canonizable saints, they're disarming, not in that they are they have this amazing uh, virtue or quality or charism that pops out at me. It's like, whoa, this person's surrounded by unapproachable light. They're usually disarmingly amazing in that they're so ordinary. Yeah. Like there's this, they've mastered being regular people. Uh, yeah. I, I think of my own parents, like they, they've, worked on themselves so hard through the years and become such prayerful people and they just hang out and they bake bread and help with the kids and <laughs> they're, they're just so not annoying <laughs> and they could be overwhelming in a million ways but they're, they have a peace that it's so much work to just be normal and kind of enjoyable uh, like the work of living in a monastery or living in family life it takes so much work on ourselves yeah Though having uh, just been in Idaho with you, yeah, yeah. I, I have to say, I think there's something about Idaho that must form men in ordinary holiness. Because yeah, I met yeah. so many, like, really, like, They're good uh, one guy was a, a Bronco buster. He busted up his nose like 12 times, and, and he was just this really holy, neat guy. They like, go for an otherworldly life. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, maybe it has to do with being um, in nature like that. It is something. good for the soul, know. man. Sorry, uh, but you're no, no, say. no. But you you encountered a monk on a subway oh, that yeah. made you start thinking about like there's something different about these people. Yeah, and 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 the story is so understated, and yet and yet it, it uncovered something so profound. You know, beneath the dark robes and yeah. sim what looks like a simple dude uh, with a pickpocket. Yeah, share that story because I just love, well, I love reading about yeah. it. Well, the very first monk I ever met was on a bus in Rome. I was working as an archaeologist. Yeah. That was my first, well, my second job. And I, we were digging at the, um, 
the temple of the vessels and in the afternoons after work was over i would go to the vatican and back and uh, that one particular bus route is just infamous for its pickpockets so you learn to sort of deal with them and i noticed there's a pickpocket on the bus and, and he was working his way through the crowd and uh, there was a monk on the bus and I, at that point, at that time, I didn't even realize monks existed. I thought they were sort of like, I don't know, fairies or gnomes or like you know, <laughs> made up people like Eskimos or something. And the uh, and so I was watching him and then I noticed the pickpocket was working his way toward him and he started to go into this monk's pockets. So the thing is, in Rome, if you're gonna, you don't just shout, hey, everybody, there's a pickpocket on the bus, because then he might get upset and hurt somebody trying to get off. So instead, what you do is you, you sidle up to them and you wait till they're starting to go and then you hit them. You elbow them with your elbow. And, uh, and, and so I did that and he bumps into the monk and the monk kind of looks around and says hi and then completely disregards my warning. So the pickpocket does it again, goes in to try to get the monk's wallet or whatever. And uh, and so I shoved the pickpocket again, and he and this time harder. And this monk was just completely oblivious. And the third time I went to shove the pickpocket, the pickpocket looks at me like, <laughs> like I'm just job, trying to man. do my job, man. <laughs> like, leave me alone. So I tapped the monk on the shoulder. I said, scusi, questo un borseggiatore. This is a pick. He goes, are you an American? I said, yeah. He's like, me too. I was like, well, yeah, well, this guy is trying to pick your pocket. And he says, yeah, I know, but I don't have any pockets. I thought it was funny. <laughs> and I remember thinking at the time, like, that, that there was something dramatically different about this guy. Like, this, this, this guy had a power that, that or a perspective on, on the world that was utterly foreign to me. Like things that upset me would have no effect on him. And, and so I got to talking to him and he invited me back to his monastery and one thing led to another and pretty soon I was friends with him and we were hanging out on weekends. Actually a story I haven't told in a long, long time yeah. was that we were up late one night drinking ouzo together. Nice. Yeah, I know. He had been a football player for Notre Dame and, and a bartender at, po at Pat O'Brien's in New Orleans. Wow. I know. I remember meeting him. He's a big, stocky fellow, kind of boisterous. I was like, I thought you were a bunch of skinny little bald dudes that don't talk to anybody. He goes, well, some of us are, you know, but... Um, <laughs> But he and I would stay up kind of late talking, and I remember saying to him, um, pray clearly doesn't work. And because I was going through a kind of atheist phase, it was, I was a pretty tepid atheist because I still went to church on Sunday. Wow. I didn't want to you know, burn my bridges. Um, so I wasn't a very good atheist. But I remember saying to him that, like, if I had spent this much time, practicing juggling i would be a great juggler by now but i've been praying my whole life and i actually have less faith now than when i started so clearly praying doesn't work and he looked at me and he goes you know what you know what you need to do you need to pray more <laughs> i was like are you not listening to the word? <laughs> I was like, it doesn't, I have more questions now than when I started. And he turned around and took a book off of his shelf and he gave it to me. And I still have it. And I committed a whole chapter to memory and have since forgotten it. But it by Rainer Marie Rilke called Letters to a Young Poet. And in it, he says, uh, this poet asks him about his vocation. He says, how do I know that I'm called to be a poet and not something else? And he says, I'm going to completely misquote him, but I'm going to try anyway. He says something like, I beg you, dear sir, to learn to love the questions themselves as though they were locked boxes or rooms that you couldn't access immediately or a very foreign language that you had to learn. 
and then someday, gradually, you will live your way into the answer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'll, I'll send you the quotes you can yeah, put please. on your yeah. answer. It changed my life. And then, of course, he told me to pray to St. Therese of Lisieux and that she'd give me a rose, which totally undid everything he'd said before because I said to him, well, isn't this just exactly the kind of superstition wow. that Catholics are into? But he's like, no, pray to her and she'll give you a rose. This story's, to make a story even longer, yeah, 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 go for well, it. to make a long story longer, I'll tell you the story of my, my experience with Therese. But he said, pray to St. Therese, she'll bring you a rose. And I, I said to him, Oh, how about I pray to the tooth fairy and it'll bring me a quarter, huh? I was like, this is pray to the Easter bunny to bring me some eggs. And, and and it was just, and then he handed me, he also gave me a copy of her story of a soul, which is so sweet. Like it almost makes your teeth curl. I like, she is not my type. Let me mm -hmm. tell you, like Augustine, that's a guy like, <laughs> yeah. it, but she's like, Oh, fluffy lamb, Jesus, I do love you so much. I'm like, all my Carmelite sisters are watching right now. I'm, a, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh -oh, <laughs> I mean, no, no, do, do, okay. Don't get me wrong. I love no, Therese. Not everybody's for everybody, man. That's okay. not me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, no, I do. I love her, but she's a bully. Um, yeah. it, because the next day, I, I was working as a janitor in this yeah. monastery. And the next day, um, gosh. So wait, you're an you're an atheist hanging out with a monk, working as a janitor in a monastery. Right. So God's bringing well, you to faith. Well, bad atheist though. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, but uh, God's bringing you to faith and a monastic life at the same time. It's not like it's yeah, this, this neat stage. I didn't know I was being brought into the That's monastic incredible, life. Incredible, dude. Well, thanks. Or no, praise God Seriously, for it. Seriously, it wasn't me that did God. it. Praise God. But uh, there was this really cheesy painting. It wasn't even a painting. It was a a re I remember it was a relief silver like painting ish yeah. thing of Teresa of Lisieux. Really bad art. And yeah, yeah. my mother's an artist, so kind of a famous artist. And so there's nothing I detest more than bad artwork. Yeah, no, and, and I really think, I think bad artwork is what got our society into this crisis to begin with, but we can talk about that I later. I wish you had time for like 15 interviews with you. Let's no, do it. Yeah, I'll stay. I know, Maybe I it'll snow. Until one in the morning. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Um, but she, anyway, and so I said to her, I, I dusted off the painting deliberately, and I said, okay, St. Therese, I don't believe you exist. I mean, I believe, I, yeah, I don't believe God exists, and I definitely don't think you'd give me a rose if that were even the sort of thing you did. But if it is, I want one now. <laughs> and I remember the prayer word for word because the next room I went into, I unlocked the door, walked in, and there was a red rose sitting on the table. Come on. And these, and this is, I know, it, I wouldn't, for the record, I wouldn't believe the story if someone else told it to me, even now. But it happened. I, I have the rose in my room, in my cell. Um, a fresh red rose, and, and this room, by the way, had not been occupied for two months. Um, wow! And, and, and it happened like that every single time I prayed to her, a rose turned up. Oh, and well, okay. The Lord loves you so much, man. Well, Therese certainly does. Yeah. But yeah, He loves everybody, doesn't He? And, he does. And, and I'm I'm convinced that we get miracles all the time, and we just explain them away. You mm. know, I. Uh, we impose our oh, man, a, a secularist so worldview on, on, uh, on, on our experiences. Well, I just, I was telling you earlier, I have Parkinson's yeah, at, yeah. from getting beat up too much playing rugby, and I had brain surgery. They installed, if you had seen me six years ago, I, I was like this. Wow. Right? But uh, an alumnus of our school, we, we run a school in St. Louis called Priory, and an alumnus pioneered this surgery where they stick a battery in your chest and run a wire up your neck into your brain, and it shocks your brain and kind of wakes it up. Wow. And um, so you had that done. Yeah, and they That's have to, big. and you have to be conscious through the whole thing too. Yeah, it's really disconcerting. You're. And you're um, kidding me. No, no, you have to be conscious. And at the end of the surgery, they turn it on. The video you can link to the. the it was so successful. They actually put a videotape of the, of me in the surgery 
online. It's like if you look up Augusta and what a shaking, I think is you can get it. But but stopped. the coolest thing wow. was that yeah. So they're like, okay, we're turning it on in five, four, three, two, and I go, huh? <laughs> and then wow. he says, so what hymn are we singing, Father? And I was like, him. He goes, yeah, let's sing a hymn. I was like. Well, you choose. So they said, Amazing Grace. And then all the surgeons and the anesthetists and the nurses, they all sang Amazing Grace. And uh -huh. this is Georgetown, by the way, which doesn't have its act completely together, but yeah. by golly, their neurosurgery department does. That's incredible. And yeah, but well, what's even more incredible is that I turned to him. Well, I didn't turn because I was locked in, but I said, Thank you for that. And he goes, Oh, Oh, this is his name is Chris Calhorn, by the way. Shout out to Dr. Chris Calhorn, whose father, by the way, is a widower who just joined our monastery. No but, way. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Like, cool. I, I've told Natalie, yeah. like, marriage is, is beautiful, but it's so much work that there's no way I'm doing it again. And I, if you die, I'm a monk. You're <laughs> invited. You're invited. Well, ooh, my, it takes I, so I much work a, to get to the place where it's enjoyable. I had like, a I'm, debate I'm with somebody out. over which one of our vocations was harder, and we decided that it's. Being a monk is harder at the beginning, mm. but easier as you go along. Mm. Marriage is easier at the beginning, but harder as you go along. I've had the opposite. I've had, yeah. Really? Yeah, no, thank God. Really? Like, yeah, we, we, yeah. How extraordinary. How wonderful. Yeah, but yeah, anyway, so, he, so Chris Calhorn, the head of neurosurgery, he says to me, I said, thank you for singing that hymn. He goes, well, you didn't do it for you. He says, we do this after every surgery. No way. He's how like, beautiful. And then he said... Just because it's science doesn't mean it isn't a miracle. Wow. Which, yeah, I know. We, we, we're secondary causes, right? Yeah, the yeah. ultimate cause that's God, and, and we forget to say thank you yeah. for everything. Like, ultimately, it all comes back to him. As a treat for my yeah. students, I sometimes turn off my brain if they all do well enough on the quiz. And it's amazing. Like, I can't even... Wait, you have a literal switch? Yeah, there's a little button on a remote that can turn it on and off. No way. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. No, you just, are you making that up? No, no. You seriously have a button remote. on you you could turn off and on? There's, there's two little remote control. One controls the battery and one controls the wires. And Do not let your students get a hold of that remote control. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have to because I'm so uncoordinated, I can't get the button. Wow. I can't even press the button. Wow, man. Um, uh, the, I, okay, yeah. so I've heard that... Oh, wait, but no, no, Teresa, let's see. Yeah, Teresa, sorry. Yeah, finish, yeah, whose interview is this anyway, I huh? I'm <laughs> just just, <laughs> just keep going, man. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not well, gonna but stop because you. the trace of the story is not over yet. Because every single time I prayed to her, a rose turned up. Like, I, and just like, like I was, I was in the monastic library. I was looking through books, and I said, "Trace, give me a rose. Open the books, and rose petals fall out at my feet." Right? I mean, just. <laughs> To the point where it was just nutty. Like, oh, I just had to come back to the faith because she had bullied me into it. But here's wow. the capstone moment is that I came back from Italy and took up my old job again, which was as a beach patrol lifeguard on the beach, and uh, obviously. And these guys, like, did not... It was a total culture shock, right? Yeah, from, from Italy back to Italian beach patrol. Italian Benedictine monk to... Galveston Island Beach Patrol, like, yeah. and then I'd be like, "Yeah, you got, you guys ought to, I'll look up these monks. They're really cool." And they're like, "What?" Yeah. So I had another wow. crisis of faith, and it was eight o'clock in the morning. I just started my shift, I'm staying out the twenty uh, seventh, no, fifty seventh Street Pier. And I'm looking out at the water, and I'm like, "Well, Teresa Lisieux." I, I maybe it was just an Italy thing, yeah. but if I need a rose, and so help me God, and I probably shouldn't even say this online because it's so unbelievable, a yellow rose washed in no on the tide. Yeah, I, I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it if I were you. Oh, so wow. you don't have to. But I took it home and I showed it to my parents and I said, this is, or I showed it to my mom and she put it in a vase on the table. Wow. And then that night my dad threw it away. <laughs> I was like, really ticked. I was like, you're not like, dad, that rose washed in on a wave. Like, and anyway, the next night when I came home from work, 
<laughs> there was a rose on my table Incredible. And it, with a note from my dad that said, Dear Jason, I'm sorry I threw away your rose, but a father's love for his son is a rose of sorts. That's beautiful. Yeah. Man. On the back it said, by the way, I dropped your toothbrush in the toilet. Sorry. Because <laughs> <laughs> my family doesn't do the much. No, no, no. But, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then there's a PS, one last thing, which is at Seek this year. Yeah. You were there. I, I, I was there. Yeah. Uh, just as a participant, not as yeah. a speaker. Um, and I sat down next to, I was, and I've been having a real crisis recently. Mm. I'll just let, let that be known. Because uh, our monastery has had a dark, a dark night for the last. Just with guys leaving. Or? Guys leaving. Guys doing stupid, stupid things. Um, I, I, I do want to hear a little more about that. Ugly. But I got ugly. a question before I let you get yeah. to that. But I, I really do want to hear. Um, oh, but let me finish the yeah, story. Yeah, we'll, we'll circle yeah. back to that. I got, I, got the I, been, I got all your threads in my head. I been, go, good. I'm, that's I'm what, that's what like makes you, you like so good. What do you do? I have it all. I have um, like 10 kites I don't. that I'm holding on I to. just have one thread that just zooms off in other yeah. <laughs> Um But anyway, so I sat down next to this guy, and I look over, and he's got tattoos all over him, like it was his face, his yeah. body, and he's got a rose tattooed right <laughs> on his forehead. And I'm like, holy cow, like... She never comes to me the way I expected. I said, what does that rose mean? And he goes, it has no meaning. And I said, can I give it a meaning? He's like, you give it a meaning. He, he, it turns out he's a famous comedian named Shane Smith. But he says, you give it to me, and it will be that meaning for the rest of my life. And I said, that is St. Teresa's rose. And he goes, okay. How beautiful. Man. Yeah. Yeah, God bless Shane Smith. Pray for Amen. him. Amen. And I got to say this: if you're if you're a non-believer, like the biggest challenge I could give you, so that's my camera that I talk to. If I, if I talk to the viewer, if I break the fourth wall, <laughs> ask God if He exists. <laughs> so, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Just gonna knock her. Ask him, like, if you, God, I'm not sure if you exist. I'm <laughs> And if that doesn't work, hit up St. Therese, man. So here's the thread in my head right now. We're yeah. going to come back to Rules for Life. The thread in your head in the monastery. you're dead. But first, like... That's what, what he you, said. You, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say it in bed. He, he, is, he is drugs. You don't... <laughs> Just ask Fred. <laughs> <laughs> what, what got you from a believer to that moment where it's like... You take the leap of faith to believing and... There's, I mean, it's, it's, it's one straight line, right? So right? I've heard it said that the the sacrament for religious life is baptism. It's like living out your, your regular baptismal call in a really intentional way. Yeah. When did you take that deeper dive and realize, oh my gosh, not only do I believe in God, uh, I'm mm. going to be a monk. That's next level. That's, that a lot of the world would look at that and say it's crazy. Here's a good looking dude who's surfer and you know um plays rugby he's got a lot going for him uh he's gonna leave it all behind and that the black you're wearing is like a symbol of like i'm, I'm of death of, of death i'm, I'm rejecting yeah. the entirety of the world for heaven and you got the white on the inside right it's like it's like yeah. it's, it's pointing <laughs> to the lord uh when uh. did you make the decision when did you know you're gonna be a monk was it terrifying <laughs> um yeah it was terrifying uh, well, okay. I think initially I came to, well, okay. The short answer is I finally, okay. What was the question? <laughs> when did you know you are going to be a monk? I knew I was going to be a monk about three weeks after I took my solemn vows. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I, up until that wow. point, I was like, you know, like I remember even the night I took solemn vows, I was like, you know, if I left tomorrow, <laughs> like nobody would really think that was real vows right but after three yeah. weeks I was like I knew what I was doing I was sane and sober and nobody forced me I'm a monk I'm a monk like yeah though to be honest like even now right this second saying I'm a monk sounds odd coming out of my mouth I I, I look at myself sometimes like in a window or something as I walk by I go is that me it's incredible it is, and but I it is. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and it's awesome. But it's also it was also yeah. kind of ambition, you know. I mean, I, I played rugby and I surfed and I did a lot of sort of extreme stuff, you know. And 
if I was going to be a politician, I would want to be president. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. If I was going to be a, a rugby player, I was going to break every bone in my body doing it. Um, and if I was going to be a Christian, I was going to be absolutely all in. Like, wow. Yeah. So you saw the direct connection of like, this is a deeper living of just regular Christianity, the yeah. monastic life. I, I, deeper. I don't know about if it's deeper because I know some lay people who are way deeper than me. No, thank you for but that. It is, but it is. Oh, you're welcome. I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. <laughs> no, I was no, talking like, about thanks you. Thanks for though. holding up a lay vocation. Actually, yeah. But there, but there is like I'm, I'm saying as a layman looking but at you. It's an extreme thing. Whoa. Yeah, it's it is it's it's there's a overt intentionality in what your life embodies that mine can't. Well, my That's sister, awesome. my sister's in the army and she's married to a green beret. Wow. And she. Uh, <laughs> My mom says uh, she doesn't know what happened, but her son, wear, her daughter wears combat boots and her son wears a dress. We're like very progressive <laughs> family. Um, but but uh, a couple of years ago, I was asked to speak to the Council of Major Superiors and Religious or something, and they gave us Vita Consecrata to read. Uh, they gave it to me, and they said, we want you to speak on whatever's in here that challenges you. So I found this spot in Vita Consecrata where JP2 says that the vocation to the religious life is objectively superior to any other call, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, that's challenging because yeah, yeah. do we really believe this? Like, I don't know. I don't know if I believe it, you know? Yeah. But I made sure I called up my sister because she and I have had a competition going to see who could be the most annoying for about 30 years. <laughs> And I said, guess what, Kristen? Guess who has the objectively superior vocation? And there's a long pause during which I got a little scared because she's won medals in sharpshooting. And I, <laughs> um, and then she goes, well, you do, obviously. But don't confuse that with being an objectively superior person. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And I was like, whoa, 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 explain that to me. And she goes, well... Look, I'm in the army, and I'm an enlisted person, right? But John, he's a Green Beret, right? We're both equally part of the army. The army needs us both, but he's elite, right? When he comes into the dining hall, he get they get their own table, like because they're willing to make sacrifices in the field that we aren't. And right. She said, so you're elite forces, right? But that doesn't diminish what I am. Amen. Yeah. yeah. It's a big, My sister's big the real saint in the family. That's awesome. Uh, man. I get the press, but she's, yeah, remind me to tell you <laughs> that there's a whole, you should have her on the show. I, she, dude, I will. Yeah, I will. She's, she's amazing. Uh, I love this, though, after your, after your final vows, because this sums up what religious life's about, what all the rules are ordered toward. After your vows, and I read your journal because you put it in your book. Oh, no, right. I didn't steal his journal. Yeah. Um, my entire life is consecrated to Jesus Christ. From now on, everything I do is consecrated to Christ. I wake for Christ. I sleep for Christ. I work and play and teach and learn for Christ. I eat cereal for Christ. Brush my teeth for Christ. Lose my car keys and annoy my brethren for Christ. <laughs> I live Did for I Christ. See that? Yeah, clever. yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, man. Praise God for that beauty. Um, now, that monastic life, like a big part of it, is like you're you're doing this with brothers. Yeah. And that's part of what keeps you strong. Uh, and you said your community's in a, yeah. in a dark time. What's it do to you when somebody leaves that brotherhood? Oh, man. Well, um, man, that's a heck of a question, dude. Yeah. Um, what does it do to me? Well, we just recently had one leave. So um, what did it do to me? I'm just going to have to shoot from the hip here because I've never actually considered it. Um, well, the first thing it does is it eviscerates me. Mm. Like, I, I, it, it, I, like, I feel just completely empty. Mm. Like, because there is, you know, they say don't put your trust in men, right? But, but you do anyway. You know, you trust them to be around. Um, and then I get really depressed. <laughs> mm. And then I think I'm losing my vocation. 
Uh, and then I get really angry, <laughs> and then um, and then I get really determined. You know, we 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 had a monk leave, not well, several years ago now, and I said to the the boys in a sermon, I said, um, I'll tell you what, like, well, actually, what inspired it was that. Um, our students say that the Benedictines are the Navy SEALs of the church. Mm. And for the record, the diocesan priests are the special forces. So they yeah, outrank cool. us. They're behind <laughs> enemy lines, like teaching the locals how to fight kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Um, but one of the, one of my students goes up to me and he first, he, uh, he's a really great kid. Uh, he, he decided he was an atheist and all that sort of stuff that kids do. Yeah, yeah. But when news broke that this monk was having a scandalous exit, mm. he came running toward me on the parking lot, and I thought, oh, no, here we go. He's just going to say, I told you so. Instead, he hugged me. He said, I've got your... <laughs> mm. Darn it, I cried on... What's his name's show as well? On... Uh, Fred. Matt Fred yeah. show too. We don't mention his name on my yeah, show. Sorry, the he who does not need to be named. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, he hugged me and he said, "I got your back." He said, "But I'll tell you what." He says, "You guys may be the Navy SEALs of the church, but this is like some Black Hawk Down stuff, bro." Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and I and so that Friday I had the school mass and I said, "You know what? It is Black Hawk Down, but if I, but but there were guys who deliberately parachuted into that fight, right?" Knowing they weren't going to make it, they 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 put themselves in that spot, and and by God, those guys are heroes. And if I am the last monk standing on the burning wreckage of this project, <laughs> so help me God, huh, I'm going to be here. And uh, I got to say, then I, I went know. off and cried. I think or yeah, something, yeah. but but you know. I just want to say, yeah. I just want to say thank you, man. Because oh, well. I mean, for for uh, for me, the monastic life is is just a, a an epitome of Christian life lived out in a very perfect, beautiful, intentional way. In and, a very imperfect, intentional, beautiful right, way. Right, yeah, yeah, right. But it, in a hyper intentional way, and and it you're you're a pillar. Like seeing monks in the church, seeing monks that that knowing that you're in the world with me helps me be strong and just living the basics of Christian life myself. And I know there's a lot of sacrifice with that. And I just thank you. Oh, thanks. It's thanks. And if there are any guys out there who want to parachute into a burning <laughs> wreckage of a monastery, give me a call. <laughs> the ab for so yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Hey, Amen. How do they give you a call? Actually, what, what, what's the abbey that you're at? St. Louis Abbey, St. Louis, Missouri. Just Fantastic. look us up online. Um, so, What's the difference? Yeah. I mean, this this will help me in my Christian life to stay strong. You've been at this for a long time. What's what sets apart monks who die monks from monks who don't? I mean, they, there's the same uh. humanity, there's the same struggles, and I know it's not easy to put in a formula. And I don't. I'm not asking. No, you to it is. Under the bus. It, it is. is okay. Then even better. every monk I've known who left had a secret. Hmm. And I, I, you know, when the abbot made me the vocation director. The first, I, I wasn't even thinking about it. I go, I'm a terrible monk. Like, <laughs> and he goes, yeah, but your heart's in the right place. <laughs> and, and the thing is, I, I'm not a good monk. I sleep through my prayers, and I try to, my best to avoid doing my lexio, and I'm distracted during my meditation. But I'll say this for myself. I tell my superiors everything. Wow. Every temptation, every fall. Like I'm sure it gets annoying. Oh, and I'm really good at apologizing. That's beautiful. Like I I I, I mess up a lot, but I do mm. try to apologize. And actually no, it's two things. It's the secrets and it's the pride. It's mm. if these guys would have told the abbot and then had the grace to apologize, I think they could have made it. Every one of them. Wow. I was going to ask you to like go through and summarize oh. Benedictine rules, 
But I, I like the things that are just popped out of this in the free flow conversation, like don't grumble, um, <laughs> right? Really back to the beginning, uh, that life of de devotion to prayer, uh, don't, don't have secrets. Yeah. Like, th these are fairly basic things that make you thrive that if I live them will make me thrive. Yeah. Uh, does anything else, anything else pop, to, uh, pop out, come to mind that you, before we wrap that you, you would urge me as a layman, hey, here's a Benedictine rule of life that yeah, would bless yeah. your life. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. I like no, that no, one. No. no, I'm dead serious. I, I know well, it. When, yeah. I, when I first started my novitiate, we had a visiting monk from, uh, uh, from Downside Abbey in England, and he was one of these fiercely eccentric Englishmen who has like hair going every direction and yeah, yeah. stains all over his scapular. And I said, Father, <laughs> I said, Father, do you have any advice for a new monk? And he said, Yeah, shut up. And keep your head down and listen. And 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 it was the best advice I've never followed. But it, <laughs> but I try to follow it. And yeah, I think if you can work three minutes of silence into your day, you will find I'm sure you do, because you wouldn't be a good interviewer if you didn't. Um, that like all of a sudden the whole world clarifies yeah. and you hear people, well, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I don't mean to flatter you here, yeah. but, but I'm gonna, um, that like, no, 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 stop. you're asking stop. me, please, yeah, please, yeah. Stop, please. Well, but you're asking me questions that get way down into me because you can hear things that other people can't. Right. I, I've done a lot of these interviews over Skype and in person and stuff. And um, you and that other guy who we won't name no, never, never. are the only two who, well, not the only two. There are lots, but but a good interviewer, I'm guessing you must spend some time in silence or else you wouldn't know how to listen like no, this. No, a lot of prayer. Yeah. The kids are convinced that the monks, the kids in our school are convinced that we have magic powers. But I just say, no, if you would just put your phone down for five minutes a day, mm. you would be able to read people the way we do, oh. you know? Anyway. Praise God. Brother, yeah. I, I just, this is, it's good for my soul to hang out with you. Yay, good. Yeah. Well, it's good for my soul to hang out with you, so. And I hope it's been good for you guys to. to a big group <laughs> yeah, hug. Yeah, bigger, there it is, man. Uh, your book about the rules for life, because I know we, we just kind of danced around them, and if you want to take a deep dive into reading the Benedictine rules and applying them to your life, you wrote an awesome book on it. What's it called? It'd be a shallow dive, but for a deep dive. For me, it was deep enough. Augustus yeah, yeah. Delat, August Delat, but it's called Humility Rules. St. Benedict's 12-Step Guide to Genuine Self-Esteem by Ignatius Press. Gorgeous. Good Jesuits. Praise God. Amen. Thanks again, man. Would you bless everybody oh. watching? May Almighty God bless you and keep you and shine his light on you and make you all great saints. Let's hope that there's a whole wave of, of, of canonizations in about 50 years. And, uh, so Benedict, and I'll, do, I'll do it old school, too. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, Filius, Spiritus, Sanctus. Amen. And if you're not a missionary of joy yet, go to reallifecatholic.com, jump in, get off the fence, support our work. Oh, and also, we have a whole new subscription platform where you can get all our courses to help you be awesome. Not just things to educate you in your faith, but things to help you thrive as a human being, not with self-help, but with God's divine help. All that's available on reallifecatholic.com. It's $14.95 a month, I think. And look, if our ministry's been blessing you for a long time, I'm going to guilt the viewer. Dude, help us out. Not only do you get lots of stuff, it's what keeps this thing going. You wouldn't be you Catholic guys. if you weren't feeling <laughs> I know, guilty man, about something. A little bit. Shame on you. <laughs> God bless you guys.